Did you know nearly one in five adults in Barbados have diabetes? Did you know diabetes is one of the leading causes of vision loss in the world? Regular eye screening can save your eyes. Contact the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program today at 243-3937 to find out how you get your simple digital eye screening done. Hello, Larry, and good morning to everybody tuned in to VOB this bright Saturday morning. It's me, Peter Boyce, and you know what happens at 9 o'clock every Saturday. You get to hear 15 sugar-free minutes with the compliments of the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program in partnership with the Barbados Community Foundation and the Maria Holder Diabetes Center. You see, our Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Motley, has been included on the annual list of the 100 most influential people in the world, according to Time magazine. Congratulations to our Prime Minister in achieving this status. Cheese on bread, that's something that we can all be proud of. Another local entity we can also be proud of is the Maria Holder Diabetes Center. You know, people sometimes just feel like they have to catch a plane and go overseas if they want to get world-class treatment. Well, if you are a diabetic, international treatment is just a bus trip away right here in our own Barbados. All you have to do is catch a bus and get off at the Eunice Gibson Polyclinic in Warrens. And right behind that polyclinic, you get to the Maria Holder Diabetes Center, which offers a range of services especially designed with diabetics in mind. And as our Prime Minister, one of the world's most influential people said, I look forward to partnerships with Maria Holder Memorial Trust and other entities who believe that they can make a difference. The partnerships with the private sector, the partnerships with the civil society like Maria Holder Memorial Trust, the Sandy Lane Trust, the Barbados Children's Trust, Barbados Heart and Stroke Foundation, Barbados Diabetes Foundation, these are the partnerships that work because we cannot do it on our own as a government. As the PM said, the objective is to have partnerships that work. And one of those partnerships took place last week Saturday and we talked about it right here on this show. You remember? As World Hypertension Day was the 17th of this month, the Diabetes and Hypertension Association of Barbados, the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Barbados, got together with the Barbados Diabetes Foundation and formed a partnership and did a series of community blood pressure screenings at different locations, which I told you about. You might not get your pressure check. You should have. I did, and I get my body mass index and all sorts of things. A lot of people went down too. You will now hear from Dr. Diane Braffitt in an extract recorded on location at one of the screening sites last week so you can hear how things went. Listen. So here we are, uh, Barbados Diabetes Foundation, Maria Holden Diabetes Center for the Caribbean from May Metro Month. Today we are featuring blood pressure checks at Worthing Court Food Square, Worthing Gardens Food Square. Um, it was a good day. So far we've had over 30, maybe near to 35 people coming at their check. Yeah, so we certainly did pick up here of raised blood pressure but what's interesting of course is that most of the persons that we screened um, in the food cart were actually probably under the age I would say of say 55 and uh, there were a lot of younger adults as well and one of the concepts was that well if my blood pressure is raised it's probably pseudo hypertension or I'm under stress you know um, but I think that there's that need to sensitize especially younger people you know, to check their blood pressures and make sure that they don't in fact have hypertension because the reality is hypertension is very common in Barbados and there are a lot of younger persons with undiagnosed hypertension. So it's been a good day and I thank Ross, medical students, and also university medical students who have come together to make this a possibility. So you say you even had children coming to as well? Yeah, we had um, a little, one or two children who came to, they wanted their blood pressure checked because their parents were checking their blood pressure. And then others, we just asked them about what they knew, you know, about diabetes, hypertension, what they do to stay healthy, what's the importance of water. So I think it's always important to get like children engaged in this message and this dialogue and you know to um, impress on them the importance of being healthy from a very young age so they take it with them throughout the rest of their lives basically. My name is Asia Suarez. And how has this experience been for you? It's been wonderful. I wasn't expecting to have this much fun but the people have been really great and super receptive. Um, a lot of them want to sit and ask questions about the blood pressure checks and it's so important to educate people and allow them to learn more about their health and take control of it for themselves and to take measures that are necessary in order to get their health back in check. So it's been really nice to get to connect with people and to get to talk to them and things like that and to, you know, kind of share experience with them. So it's been very beneficial, a lot more fun too than I thought. 
morning. I have a question for nutritionist Victoria Cox. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I just feel like eating a piece of sweet potato. And I just cook it and I just eat real sweet. And sometimes I wake up and say, you know what? I feel like eating some English potatoes today. And that is what I just cook. But I was wondering, what is the difference between sweet potato and English potato? And which one better for you, especially if you're diabetic? Would be the difference between a sweet potato and what we tend to call English or Irish potato. So here I've got a sweet potato and an English potato. Sweet potato is a little bit bigger, but we're gonna pretend they're about the same size. And like I said, what I want you to remember is that all carbohydrates are gonna end up as sugar one way or the other. So it's not to say that, you know, one of these has a lot more carbohydrate or starch in it than the other. They're both complex carbohydrates or starches. With that said, I'm sure many of you have heard before that sweet potato is better for you than English potato, and English potato tends to spike up your blood sugars. And the reason that you might see that actually is often the case is because sweet potato has a lower glycemic index than English potato, which is kind of ironic considering it's a sweet potato. So we therefore, you know, we tend to encourage people to choose sweet potato when they are able to do so instead of the English or Irish potato. So again, it's a case of if I eat equal amounts either of a sweet potato or an English potato, so the same amount of starch in theory, you know, I might still notice that after I eat the sweet potato, my blood sugar doesn't go quite as high, whereas when I eat the the, uh, English potato, my blood sugar seems more inclined to want to spike upwards. So, like I said, it's sort of a stepwise system. My first thing that I would want to encourage someone to know is that have an understanding that both of these are carbohydrates or starches, both will end up as sugar in the end. However, if you then, okay, no, I could either have the English potato or I could have the sweet potato because I have them both available to me, then you would know based on the glycemic index knowledge that you're gaining that the sweet potato is going to be the more preferable option. However, let let me remind you again that just because the sweet potato might be the better choice, it does not mean that we can eat unlimited amounts of sweet potato. Um, it's just an important distinction to make. When we say that something is healthier, it doesn't mean that we can eat endless amounts of it and not expect the blood sugar, our blood sugars to go up. I mean, if we still ate a massive portion of sweet potato, you can be sure that we would expect to see a big, uh, a big increase in our blood sugar. Because like I said, ultimately, both of these get metabolized into glucose. But this one is going to do it much more rapidly and kind of cause that spike and fluctuation want to avoid. That might have been something that you wanted to know ever since. The difference between English potatoes and sweet potatoes. And you just got the answer, compliments of the Maria Hola Diabetes Center. I didn't even know that you used to call English potatoes Irish potatoes, but I learned something now. And that's the kind of healthy, cogent information you get on this show, which is why you tune in every single week. So when you go to Bridgetown early on Saturday mornings, you know what you should buy. Which is how we segue into our musical selection for this week. Since Cropover is coming this year, we go to a calypso from the mighty Gabby, Dr. Anthony Carter. This is Bridgetown, early on Saturday morning. See if you go holy note long like Gabby. I can listen for you. Bridgetown early, Saturday morning. See the women, how they calling, singing. Come for your breakthrough, come for your corn. Come for the apples, precious the morning. Comfort banana, comfort potato, comfort the guava, the guava, the guava, the guava. You make it to the end? You make it to the end, you know it? Or you think? Contact the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program today at 243 Eyes 243-3937 to find out how you get your simple digital eye screening done. The Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program.
We now welcome to the show Miss Kim Sobers Belgrave. Welcome to the show, Kim. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, how long have you had diabetes, and how have you um, been able to cope with the condition? It was about seven years I'm battling with the um with diabetes, and it has been a journey. It has not always been easy, but I am now able, as the years go by, I'm now able to handle it and keep it under control. Tell us about some of the challenges that you would have encountered that you would have had to overcome. Okay, so as a female, I've had. When the sugar is very high, I would have had like some infections and stuff to deal with, along with constant urinating all the time, being tired on a regular basis. My eyes used to be very blurry. Sugar cravings were a task because, you know, you're not supposed to use the sugary stuff, but when those sugar cravings hit, it's very hard to resist. Mm-hmm. Then sometimes I would have the um, like the numbness under my feet and stuff like that. And some of the medication that I was on as well in the early stages, they used to have me feeling kind of nauseated and stuff like that. So you mentioned eyes. You recently had your eyes screened at the Diabetes Center. Tell us about your experience with that process. Okay, it was very easy no pain whatsoever. The lady that did it, she was very nice and patient and I wasn't sure exactly what it was all about and she explained to me what the procedure was. Uh, It wasn't long. She filled out the form for me and then the screening was done. Very nice people, very patient, very, very, very patient. I must see it. What did you learn most from being a patient at the diabetes center? What I learned most is how to plate my food, how to know the amount of starches, carbohydrates and stuff, know how to balance them out and make sure that, you know, you, you read the labels when you're buying your food stuff, read the labels on all of your food to know the carbohydrate intake, the carbohydrate percentage, the sugary percentage, all those things. That was one of the most challenging things because most of the time you see no sugar things and, and juices with no sugar and you think, okay, that's cool. Because before, when I first found I was a diabetic, I used to go hard on smoothies, fruit smoothies, not knowing or recognizing that even though the fruits are healthy, they were too much sugar putting into the body. So, yeah, I was educated on the quantity of sugars that are in certain foodstuffs and stuff like that, and that is most important as a diabetic. I must say that being a patient at the diabetic center has really turned around my life as a diabetic. Before, I was seeing a different doctor, but things weren't working out for me until I started attending the diabetic center. And to be honest, they educated me on the do's and don'ts as a diabetic. They don't, the doctors are very patient. They do not get on as well because you're a diabetic. You should know that you shouldn't do this or you should do this. They actually work with you. And the other thing is that when you are talking to your doctor as a diabetic, be very honest. Do not hide the fact that you may have given in to your sugar cravings and use more sugar than you should or you did you ate things that you really should not have eaten and that because of your sugar level being raised please be very honest talking to your doctors because they then can help you control as long as they know what you're doing wrong they can help you control your sugar levels the Maria Holder Diabetes Center with their diabetic eye screening program offers a standard of service that equals or surpasses any you might receive internationally. And very soon, there will be a dedicated vascular department added that will be the centerpiece of a new national preventative campaign that will highlight the discovery of early circulatory problems in the limbs and extremities of at-risk persons. So if you are diabetic and listening to your radio right now, you need to make an appointment and get your eyes screened. You can reach them by calling 417-0305 or 243-3937 to make that appointment. The last 15 minutes you heard on your radio was brought to you with the compliments of the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program in partnership with the Barbados Community Foundation and the Maria Holder Diabetes Center. Did you know nearly one in five adults in Barbados have diabetes? Did you know diabetes is one of the leading causes of vision loss in the world? Regular eye screening can save your eyes. Contact the Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program today at 243-3937.
to find out how you get your simple digital eye screening done. The Barbados Diabetic Eye Screening Program. <laughs>